What's up, everyone? Good to see everyone. Well, I can't really see you because I'm on a screen, but you can see me, so it's good to be here. And we are in part three of Bring the Noise. And uh, today, we're gonna talk about uh, spiritual warfare. And just, uh, we're gonna look at some scriptures in here about how we as the church, we as Christ followers, um, have authority in, in the spirit. We have authority in Christ to not put up with the, the lies or the schemes of the devil. Somebody out there say amen. So that's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna bring the noise towards the works of darkness and bring the voice of God and the authority of Jesus into every aspect of our life. So let me open up in prayer and we're gonna jump in. So if you got your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 19. We're gonna start there and uh, let's do this. Uh, Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we stand on your word. We depend on your word. We believe that it is what you say it is. It is God breathed. It is inspired by God and it is useful for doctrine, for instruction in righteousness. So God, we thank you for your holy word and I pray that it changes us today. I pray that people are, are uh, have just a fresh impartation of confidence in your word and who they are in Christ today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. All right, here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go quickly into this, but Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it says, behold, this is Jesus talking, I give you, all right? Uh, if you're sitting with anybody, look at them and say he's talking about you. I give you the authority. I mean, this is powerful here, guys. This is something I feel like Christ followers have lost. There isn't, um, or, and they, they love God and they wanna serve him, but they don't have an understanding that Jesus has given them authority not to domineer, not to be domineering or to dominate people, but we have been given authority over the devil, okay? So I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, right? And over all the power of the enemy. Like that is absolute. I mean, you could, this scripture right here is saying a lot about who you are in Christ. You know, you're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Uh, the creator of the universe lives inside of you by way of the Holy Spirit. He's given you his word, revelation of his word. You do not have to put up with the lies, the confusion, the doubt, the unbelief, the anxiety, whatever the devil tries to throw at you, you do not have to receive it because of the Christ in you, okay? I'm gonna read it again, and I'll read the whole scripture this time. Behold, I give you authority, the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The great commission in Mark chapter 16, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature, right? Uh, it says, you shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You know, you will cast out devils. So that in and of itself, Jesus did it. The book of Acts, the apostles, the church, early church did this. They took authority over the devil. Okay, and so that is it. We don't, you know, some people say, man, um, you know, we don't wanna hear a lot about the devil or, or we, we don't wanna talk too much about the devil, but we don't wanna not talk about him either, right? We, we, we're not trying to avoid the conversation. We aren't trying to skirt around it. I mean, this, I mean, Jesus talked a lot about um, the demonic powers. He, he engaged people that were possessed, cast devils out of them. Some foamed at the mouth, some it just left in that very hour, the Bible says. Some he cast out um, spirit of infirmity. Um, the apostle Paul cast out the spirit of divination out of a lady. Like this is just, this is the normal Christian life here. So when we talk about bring the noise, first week we talked about God bringing the noise, the Holy Spirit, the voice of God from heaven. It all starts with God. Then we talked about our praise last week, bring a joyful noise time and time again in scripture, talks about us shouting, bringing the noise of our praise, let God be praised, let his enemies be scattered. And so today we're talking about 
the noise we bring, the voice of God we bring to the enemy. And we need to understand the devil is nothing to be scared of. It is not, he is not a, not a being to fear at all. I know in movies and in horror movies and it's, it's all fear based, but there is no fear in Christ when it comes to the devil. We may have feelings of fear, of threats, right? But positionally, he is nothing to fear, uh, okay? Once again, I'm gonna read it again. Behold, check it out. The whole premise for, for the message today is this. Behold, I give you the authority, the authority to trample, to trample under our feet. You know, there's songs out there, right? The devil is under my feet. That, that speaks of authority, dominion over him, okay? In Christ, not me, not my, my being, not in the name of Sean, no. In the name of Jesus, the word of God, the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, we are in Christ. So when we speak, it's as if God is speaking through us to him. All right, we have what you call, I've given you authority. Here it is. This is delegated authority. So we have been given this authority. We don't innately have it as humans. God created humans to have dominion, but in Christ, we have been given this authority. It is what you call delegated authority. It is authority, not just the power, but the authority or the right to command him to go, the right to do it. We have the right. So I'll give you an example here with this delegated authority. Um, delegated authority is much like a, uh, a policeman wearing a badge. It is the authority to stop traffic. He in and of himself, a car could run a policeman over very easily, right? So he doesn't innately have the power to stop a car, but he has the right, if there's an accident, right? And they need to close a lane, they have the authority to stop the car, okay? Now it's up to that policeman if he's gonna use the authority that has been given to him it is up to you as a believer. You've been given the badge of honor as a Christ follower that you have authority when you walk through this life. And that authority is, devil, you must leave in Jesus' name. Just like a policeman will step in the middle of traffic and redirect traffic. He does not have the innate power, once again, to stop a moving vehicle going 60 miles an hour. But he does have the authority to do it. And if that is violated, you know, that there will be ramifications for that person that violate that authority. Amen? And so you've been given that authority. So here it is. Here's my first point. Is you in Christ, you have authority in the spirit realm. Okay? You have authority in the spirit realm, spiritually. When you pray, you, you, you bring the noise. You have authority in the name of Jesus, when you pray for loved ones, when you pray for your city, when you pray for situations in your life, prayer is, is, is an exercise in spiritual authority in Christ. That's what it is, right? We have authority in the spirit realm. Here we go, Ephesians chapter six. Let's go to Ephesians chapter six. And um, verse 10, it says, Ephesians six, verse 10, it says, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able. You have authority in the spirit. You are able to walk as a person of authority against the works of darkness that you may be able to what? Stand against the wiles of the devil like a policeman. Well, and I'm using policemen, and I know we haven't had the greatest of <laughs> policemen using their authority correctly. And we could apply that to the spirit in Christians, right? We, I, I think sometimes we don't use it, and other times we, it's, 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 it's twisted, or it's against people, or, you know, it's, it's, it's not right. So authority right. is a serious thing. Authority is um, an honor, and we need to make sure our character 
is being developed and in place so that we use it right. And, and, and it's with the spirit of God. So here we go. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You have authority in Christ to stand against what the devil's lying to you about, what he's trying to get you to do as far as tempting you to sin. You have authority in Jesus' name to stand against him. All right, so, so if you're able to stand against, then do it. Do it. Don't, you, the devil doesn't need to push you around. Uh, don't let the devil push you around. Don't let the devil lie to you. And sometimes you're like, you might be, th- you, 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 maybe it's because you don't realize it. You just think it's how you're thinking and not every thought you have is, is yours. And you need, to, you need to command him to go in Jesus' name. That is your responsibility as a believer. You have the right to all those that put their faith in Christ. The Bible says it. Uh, that in John chapter one, he's given the right to become sons of God. So you have rights in Christ uh, that um, is all throughout the word. We're gonna read a few scriptures, just a few, but I wanna encourage you that you need to bring the noise uh, of the authority of Christ in you against the schemes, the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Once again, this is Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. This isn't a a natural fight. This isn't about people. This isn't about humanity. This is spiritual authority. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. The Bible says the devil is the God of this world, but the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And he has placed us here to take authority over him. All right. It's against principalities. It's against powers. It's against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. We have authority over these demons and devils in Jesus name. Okay, Um, therefore, verse 13, take up the whole armor of God. And we're not gonna go through all that, but you read this, Ephesians 6. I mean, I really believe, this is really, when I was in Bible college years ago, I went back home to San Jose and they asked me to preach at our youth service. And um, I just remember that was one of the first messages I ever preached. And I preached on the armor of God and the authority we have in Christ, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the shield of faith by which we quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, our loins girt about with truth. One of those, uh, you know, Bible translations that are a little more familiar to our language would say the belt of truth, our feet are prepared with the preparation of gospel peace. I mean, we have spiritual armor in the spirit. I remember um, one preacher uh, telling me, actually he was in Bible college, Um, And he was saying how most Christians, they have the helmet of salvation on because they're saved, but they ain't got nothing else on. So it's like in the spirit, he was being comical. They're running around the spirit realm with a helmet on, nothing, then they're naked, just vulnerable, running through life with just a helmet on, right? Like, sorry for the visual, but that spiritually speaking, that's kind of how Christians are. I mean, they, they don't understand that sword is theirs to use. The word of God, Jesus, you said, told the devil in the wilderness, it is written, you shall worship the Lord God and him only shall you serve. I mean, he used the sword, the the shield of faith, man, that's walked through life. I am the righteousness of God in Christ, the breastplate of righteousness. I mean, you know, we don't want to be Christians running around the spirit realm, in a sense, in life and be vulnerable to the devil just to do whatever he wants. And all we got is, well, I'm saved, I'm born again. I mean, there's... There, there's, there, there's, there's depth to your authority and how it affects every part of your being. Amen. Come on, somebody. So verse 13, therefore take up, the, take up the whole armor. That's the point, the whole armor. Not, we don't just want to pick and choose. We don't want to just pick and choose. We want, we need the whole armor. Every aspect of what Jesus provided us, every piece of spiritual weaponry 
we want to use. We need to bring the noise of the whole armor of God. That, why the whole armor? Why ever, Why do we need to, in essence, be consumed in Christ and with Christ? That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. There will be days of temptation, days of warfare. There will come a day of a fight. And that's why it's saying you need this on. Why? I'm not saying it's every day, all day, all the time. But the Bible promises that there will be an evil day. A day of, of you having to press through some stuff. A moment, right? That, that, that without the armor, you will get taken out. Without the armor, you will be vulnerable. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. And then it goes into the armor in Ephesians chapter 6. So here's the thing. Here's my second point. Is Here it is. It's usually a spiritual problem, right? At the end of the day. Now, I, I, I'm not, I know sometimes in our, our Christ following communities, um, it could be appear that at times people may try to, or it comes off like they're over spiritualizing. But this is the thing. What I mean by a spiritual problem, when we say, yeah, this very well, most likely is a spiritual problem. It's not that we're negating natural responsibility and we're blaming the devil. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is underlying things in our lives, you can point it back to worship. You could point it back to prayer. You could point it back to not having the armor of God on. I'm here to tell you, I'm not saying we just, not, I'm not saying everything is a devil, but I'm not, but I'm also not saying that nothing is either, right? So, so it is usually a spiritual problem underlying our attitude. There's something underneath the surface that we need to bring to Jesus. I'm not saying it is a demon possessing you. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is it very well is, could be and usually is some sort of spiritual problem. Like I've said before, you don't have a marriage problem very well could be that you're just having a worship problem and it's affecting your marriage. You may not have a work relationship problem. It could be that God is trying to work out some deliverance in you in a spiritual area of your attitude. Somebody say amen. So it's usually a spiritual problem. When we're talking about the authority in the spirit you have is let's start there. So many times what we're dealing with is a battle in the spirit, okay? Um, and I wanna speak to you as spiritual as, as Paul wrote, um, I believe to the Corinthian church, I wanna speak to you as spiritual. It's a spiritual battle at times we sense and sometimes we'll beat ourselves up, we'll, we'll, we'll focus on the person that's getting on our nerves, but I'm here to tell you right now, we gotta take those things into prayer. Take those things into the presence of God. Give God, um, you know, surrender. It could be some surrender needed. It could be just some, Lord, can you show me what's going on here? Because is this person crazy or, or, or you know, or, or is this, what, what is this? What, God help me, walk with me through this. What I'm saying is, is if it's usually a spiritual problem, that's where we want to fix it. That's where we want to deal with it is, is on that level, okay? The, it says, we do not wrestle, wrestle with flesh and blood. The weapons of our warfare, and we're gonna get into this other scripture here at the end, it are not carnal or natural, but mighty in God. So let's deal with these things in the spirit first. Here we go, Mark chapter one. Here it is, actually I'm gonna give you something here, but go ahead and turn to Mark chapter one, verse 24, but I wanna read this from my notes. Uh, we win in the spirit. This is how we win. This is how we win. This is how... We, this is spiritual warfare right here. And this is how, this is how we win. I mean, you, it's, it's humility uh, with God and people, humbleness, it's, it's a spiritual weapon. Um, a surrender is a spiritual weapon, which is really worship. Prayer, worship, serving, forgiving others is a spiritual weapon, okay? Unforgiveness opens us up to um, demonic activity, okay? 
I'm not saying that to scare people. I'm not saying you may not have feelings of unforgiveness. I'm not even saying those feelings aren't warranted because you were hurt. But if we harbor unforgiveness, the Bible says God will not forgive us and we become vulnerable in the spirit. We become, we open ourselves up, not to the Holy Spirit, not to healing. We open ourselves up to bitterness, which defiles me and others, right? So we need to operate in our spiritual weapon. So forgiving, living pure are all spiritual weapons, all right? Living a pure and holy life separate unto God. Okay, here we go. Mark chapter one, verse 24. I'm gonna read it quickly and then we'll talk about it. Saying, this is what the devil was telling Jesus. Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Okay, he's about to cast these guys out and they're like, leave us alone, right? That's the cry of demons, leave me alone, right? Uh, verse 25, but Jesus rebuked him, rebuked him, saying, be quiet, come out. He said, shut up and come out. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. So Jesus, when he dealt with a demon, vexing somebody, it was simple. He said, shut up and come out. All right, so that's how Jesus dealt with demons, right? So this isn't some, oh, the devil, like we gotta, you know, trip out fear. Demons are everywhere, you know? Like we, that, that is not spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is addressing what's in the room, right? Addressing it and taking authority over it. That's what Jesus did. This thing was running its mouth in Mark chapter one, verse 25, simple. But Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet and come out of him. Verse 26, and when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Here's my next point. This is what we do, simple. Tell the devil to shut up and go. Authority, that's authority. Tell him to shut up and go. That's one thing we tell our children that you are, you know, we tell them, look, we don't tell people to shut up, nobody. We don't use that. We might say, be quiet, please, right? Or something like that. But I, I tell them, but you can tell the devil to shut up. That's who you can tell. Just make sure you're not assuming the devil's talking through a person and you tell that person to shut up. Don't do that. But but you, I want them to know this, right? I'm not freaking them out. There's demons everywhere. No, I'm just saying, no, Giovanna, you have Jesus in you. Dominico, you have Jesus in you. You could tell the devil to leave in the name of Jesus. He has to go, right? I was praying with my children last night and Nico was like, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I'm like, where'd you get that? He must've got it from me, I don't know. But as we're praying, he's just like, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I don't know, as a parent, hearing your children do that. Now, they're just learning, he's only five, but I want to engage them in prayer and, 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 and I want them to understand that they are not victims of spiritual activity or fear, which is really spiritual activity, because um, the Bible says God didn't give you a spirit of fear, right? Um, you know, I, I, they, they, they can rebuke and tell the devil to go, all right? Here we go. Uh, let's go to another one in Mark, okay? Mark chapter one, verse 33, just same chapter, but check this out. Um, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And when he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, right? And he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Look at this, Jesus, Christ is in us. He did not allow the demons to speak. I think sometimes we allow the devil to talk in our ear. He, we allow the temptation to run us into the ground. We allow the voice of the enemy to run his mouth too much. And time and time again in scripture, there was, you know, the, there wasn't this long drawn out conversation of, you know, it was dealt with. And I want to encourage you, church, I want to encourage, I believe, I believe if I could ask anybody in our community, hey, 
Have you ever had some sort of demonic experience that you knew that, man, this isn't God, but this is something spiritual. And whether it was in your dream or a moment, an environment, a person you were talking to or your own mind. And uh, like, you know, I believe everybody, whether you have had really intense spiritual experiences your whole life or you might have had moments here and there, I believe we've all experienced this. This is a real thing. This is, you know, the devil is real. Demons are real. And so they are here in the earth but we have authority over them. And he did not allow, he did not allow the demon to speak. We have to do that. We do not have to allow him to run his mouth. We need to tell him to shut up, and go, okay? Shut up and go. You, let me, let, me, let me review here. You have authority in the spirit realm in Christ. It's usually a spiritual problem. Okay, and you need to tell the devil to shut up and go. All right, let's go. We got just two more verses here. First Timothy chapter one, verse 17. Let's look at this one. All right, now to the king eternal. We're gonna read to verse 19. First Timothy 1, 17 to 19. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever, amen. I just love in, in talking about, you know, spiritual warfare and authority over demons. It's beautiful how, He's going, to get, he's going to mention warfare here, but, it, but, it, but it's starting with just worship and acknowledging who God is. This isn't about what we do. It's about who God is. It isn't even about our method or approach. It's about who God is. And when our faith is in a God, that is the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever, amen. That, and he is the God that you serve. So when we're dealing with demonic spirits or the devil himself or whatever, the authority we are coming in is that, is God himself. Verse 18, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare having faith in a good conscience, which some have rejected, concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck. This is why I wanted to talk about this today, bring the noise, is because I've seen way too many believers that have been saved, walking with God, and they don't understand the battle that they're fighting and the power and the authority in Christ that they get shipwrecked because they don't know how to wage war. They don't understand that this is a battle. This isn't some cute social club. The, the, the church is not a cute social club to make you feel good about yourself. Although hopefully there's some social aspects. Hopefully you do feel good about your walk with God and him and all, and all that. But this is more along the lines of a, in the spirit in the, for your life, in your soul. It's a military operation. And, and, he, and he's saying the prophecies over you, Timothy, the word of the Lord that people spoke over you, your grandmother and your mother and the, the way they raised you, the prophetic words on your life. Use them as a sword to wage the good warfare, right? You got to use the word that God has spoken over your life to, to wage war against the enemy. It's not about you. It's the word on your life. It has authority. It is a sword. So back to uh, 1 Timothy and I want to read this again, verse 18. Uh, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy. And so this is what I'm saying to you, church. You know, this charge I commit to you that uh, I, I desire for you to fulfill what God's called you to do. Um, I desire for you to finish strong. I desire for you to uh, be in this thing for the long haul. And so this is a charge that according to the prophecy previously made concerning you, uh, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Uh, this is how we uh, live in victory, is we release the word that's spoken over us over our life. We, we speak it. We use that sword. You know, think about uh, prophecies over your life. Maybe it's something God has spoken to you. 
Uh, maybe it was in a dream or a vision. Maybe it was just through reading the word. Maybe it was through the preach word. Maybe it was through just connecting with somebody and them encouraging you in something. And it really just deposited something in your spirit and in your heart. Uh, that is the beginning of it. That is just, you know, the Bible talks about how the kingdom operates like a seed. You know, it's seed time and harvest. But you have to take that seed that's been planted in your heart, that word, and you have buy it. You wage a good warfare. You fight with it. That is your weapon to uh, stay in the will of God. Verse 19, and it says, wage a good warfare, having faith and a good conscience. Having faith and a good conscience. Having faith and a good conscience, which some, some have rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck. And I am believing for you that you will not be shipwrecked in your walk with God, that you will continue. And you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say these again, okay? That you uh, have authority in the spirit realm in Christ. I mean, there's so much more in the word of God that, that speaks to this. I mean, the whole book of Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, how many times it says who you are and what you have access to and what your rights to in Christ, okay? Um, you know, tell the devil to shut up and go. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. You might say, I've never done that before. I've been in church my whole life. I've never... Done that. I'm not saying you have to do it like me or exactly. I'm just saying do what the word says and take authority over your life and over, over what God has called you to do, okay? And here is my last point, is you must war for the promise. Prophecies are simply a word that God has spoken to you. Drop it. It's a promise. That's what it is. It's how God operates. We are people of promise. We are not people that live out and feel fulfilled simply by everything we do. We are fulfilled because we're people of promise, that there's something greater I am walking in and fulfilling that has nothing to do with me. It did not start with me. It is something God promised to me. It is something that God has put on my life previously concerning you right? Previously made concerning you. It's a promise, all right? But you must war for the promise. There is a, there is a price to the promise, and it is, it, is, it, is, it is warring for it, okay? So here we go. We're going to end with this verse. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, okay? I kind of pulled uh, a lot of the more, I, and from my perspective, more of the well-known scriptures when it talks about spiritual warfare, okay? So here it is, verse three. For though we walk in the flesh, that just means we live in a natural world, we do not war according to the flesh. We, though we live in a natural world, we do not war according to the natural world, okay? Verse four, for the weapons, uh, look at your neighbor and tell them, I got weapons, all right? Say it again, say, I got weapons, hallelujah. Victory in Jesus. All right, um, verse four, for the weapons of our, our warfare. And a lot of people too, man, they talk about warfare like, they always talk about warfare like it's the devil doing something, right? Like, like we, I, I'm going through some warfare. And, and scripturally, no, we are initiating the warfare. Like, I think even in our minds, I'm telling you, the more, whenever I hear somebody preach about warfare, it's always about what the devil is doing not what we are doing. No, we are waging the war. We, you know, the weapons of our warfare, right? This isn't defense. This isn't, this is offense, okay? Spiritual warfare from a believer, Christ follower, filled with the Holy Ghost, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. You, you are offensive. Think about the weapons. The, the uh, sword is not defensive unless you're on your back, right? like in the movies, and they're trying to keep, right? Uh, a shield even in, you know, uh, in ancient 
in the ancient world was offensive. It wasn't defensive. That's how they charged, right? It's a walk of faith. So, so warfare is not something the devil does to us. It is something that we do to him, okay? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal or natural or, 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 or human, okay? But mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. That's, that's what the believer, that's, that's what the believer does. That's what, that's, that's what Christian is. We in God pull down strongholds. All right. And that, that's war language, right? When, 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 um, Joshua went to the promised land with God's people, uh, the cities they approached had strongholds, defenses, and they took it. So if you want to look at spiritual warfare, look at Joshua. They didn't sit in the wilderness and walk around the mountain and, and all that for, thir for 30, 40 years, 40 years, uh, right? They crossed the Jordan and they started with Jericho. There was a defense, a wall. What'd they do? Came down. What'd it come down with? Some noise. They shouted and they brought the noise and they took it, okay? So, uh, um, it's not carnal, but mighty God to the pulling down of strongholds. This is what we do in Christ. We pull down strongholds, all right? Now, verse five, uh, casting down arguments, okay? Not like that word arguments is, is, is thoughts. It's a mindset. It's, it's ways of thinking that are not lining up with the word. It's not argument like, like my wife and I get in arguments sometimes. Um, um, but uh, arguments are in this is, is, is arguments against the word of God in our minds. We cast those down, okay? And every high thing that, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing, here it is, every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And so this is what, God has called us to do is to use our authority in Christ and walk in the victory he has called us to. So church, bring the noise. Step into your authority. Be a believer, a Christ follower that uses the weapons God has given you to live in peace and joy and victory and in wholeness in Jesus. Amen. Love you guys. It's so awesome to be here, everybody out there. I'd love to just uh, just share the word and encourage you in that way. I hope you can pray that you're encouraged. And now what I would consider the most important part is just to lead people out there that um, have fallen away from their faith. Maybe you're not living right and you know you're not. Maybe you um, don't even know what a lot of this means, but... Um, you want to accept Jesus into your heart and life, receive his forgiveness. Jesus died and he will forgive you of every sin and justify you in his presence by you simply putting your faith in him. And so I want to lead you in a prayer. If that's you, repeat after me and just say, Jesus, I come to you as I am. I turn from my sin and I ask you to forgive me. Wash me in your precious blood. I confess you to be the Lord of my life. I receive your grace and your forgiveness. I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. And that is the start of, a, of your journey with God right there. It is simple. The Bible says... You know, confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you confess him as Lord, you shall be saved, right? This is not about works, about doing everything right. It's about receiving it, being saved by grace through faith in him. So awesome. We want to give you something. We want to give you... Um, uh, just a link to, to a short seven-day uh, Bible study 
called Next Steps, like your steps with God. And if you would like that, you simply text the word GROW to 323-405-3232. Once again, just text the word GROW to 323-405-3232 and a link will be sent to your phone. Um, and it's just a short, helpful devotional to help you in your walk with God. So praise God. Uh, congratulations. Um, love you guys and really can't wait to see uh, many of you in person soon. Peace. Good morning, guys. So great to see you guys through YouTube and how we're meeting in your living room this morning. Uh, such a great takeaway from that sermon is uh, God has given us the authority over the devil, but I believe that we have to use what God has given us. I, I know in the past I've had my family, I've, I've seen some spiritual attacks. I went straight to the bedroom, shut the door, and got on my knees and started praying and used that authority. So especially in this time right now, and we have that, all that isolation going on right now. We have to be stuck at home. And I believe the devil really wants to attack us right now. So use that authority that God has given us. Go in that room, prayer, pray, worship. Use the authority he's given us. And I believe God's going to change things in your life. So I encourage you to do that. We have a few announcements this week. Uh, if you're interested in leading at one of our hope groups that's coming up, uh, we're having a meeting on the 27th of this month. So we want you to text GROUPS to 323-405-3232. So if you're interested in leading a group, text that this week. Also, we're doing a food distribution every Thursday. We're meeting here at 11 a.m. and then we, then we start at 12. So join us for that if you want to serve. We're giving out over 200 bags of groceries each week. Join us for that. Then uh, we're going to go ahead and segue into our tithe and offering. Uh, this week, I have two verses I want to share with you. It's from uh, Matthew 6, verse 33 and 34. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's troubles is enough for today. I know right now it's kind of common right now. We try to worry about are we going to get our next unemployment check or whatever it may be. But I believe if we really seek God first, all those things will be met. He says it in the word. And I believe, I know in my past, there's some times where I wasn't seeking God first. And I believe that's when I was really stressing out and worried about my next paycheck or whatever those things were going to be. But I really believe more than ever right now, as, as we, we're seeking God, that we don't have to worry about those things. God said he'll meet every need. He says it in this book. So do that. Seek him first, and he will meet every need for you. So let's go ahead and pray uh, over the tithing offering. And if you do want to tithe with us this week, text HOPELAND to 77977. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you for the season that we're in as we're learning so much during this season. And thank you for just joining us as we continue to just tied to your house, God. We believe you're going to meet every need. As we seek you, we believe you're going to give us everything that we need. We don't have to worry about tomorrow. We're here today because you've met every need. Let that be an example, Lord. God. Thank you for what we're doing today. We're standing and talking to you today, God, because you've met every need in the past, and we believe you're going to continue to do that, God. So we thank you for being our provider, God. Thank you for continuing to just teaching us during the season, God. Thank you for being our Father and just leading our way, lead our steps, God. Lead our steps this week, God. Lead us into our purpose and our calling, God. Let us be more like your Son, Jesus Christ, God. We thank you for what you're doing, God. We love you so much. And we ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Guys, we love you so much. Thank you for joining us this week. We'll see you next week. One more. There we go. Christopher. Salvación en Cristo.
Gracias, Señor, por salvación en mi corazón y mi cabeza. Palabra de Dios en mi boca. Rolling, rolling. Oh, yeah, I'm step away. Rolling with the homies. Okay, Chris, camera's rolling, so whenever you want to go to your own...